Hello and welcome to this week's script case video. My name is Jamie and I am your host. In this week's video, we are going to be creating a PDF document with script case. Now, I hear you saying already, we have seen how to create a PDF because it's just a, a case of clicking generate, right? Like most of the applications within script case, and yes, it really is that easy. So if you haven't seen any of these videos before, then today you are in for a treat. So let's dive in and show you the project, shall we? So within this project, we have some very simple applications and it's just a basic, well, three basic forms and three basic grids which are, of course, associated to our database tables. We do have a view there added within the database also, as well as here, a custom PDF or just a PDF application. Now we will have a look at those shortly, but for now, let's have a look at the database. So within the database, as we can see, we have three tables and one view. The payment view combines the client, company, and payment tables. So it is quite easy for you to go ahead and adjust that code to include any new fields that you may want to add within these tables. So for our client table, we have here, first of all, the client ID, the client name, and then a client code. Now this code is typically used in Brazil. It is not really a European type of code. And that is what the uh, title is actually you know, titled for. So I'm not gonna go into that, but it is just a field that you can use and adjust that basically includes any type of code that you may want to have. For instance, maybe a client number. Okay, so then we also have our company table. And here within the company table, we have here some company details where you will find email addresses as well as logos and more. We have then also our payment table. And here we have then the payment ID, the client ID, as well as then the employer ID or the company ID, should I say, what well, is actually employee ID, but it's company table. Okay, so don't confuse that one. And then we have then the date, the amount, a pay description, as well as then a pay ways, which well, I will explain that one later. And then also the pay header, which I will also explain later. So do note that you can go ahead and adjust these options and really I haven't gone into much in, you know, customizing the applications very much at all because today's video really is all about the PDF. Now, again, before we dive into the project, let's just have a look at the library that we will be using for this project and that is TCPDF. Now, TCPDF comes with Scriptcase, okay? It is what Scriptcase uses for the generation of the PDF application, meaning that we can actually make adjustments to the PDF application and code it, style it, design it, pretty much however we want to. Okay, so do check this out. You have some examples here. And if we have a look here, you have here an example of a PDF that is then provided. And as you can more than likely see, it is very similar to what you have within Scriptcase. And that is because it is using the same library. Now, if I scroll down here, we can see here that we are first of all creating a new document. And here we are using the TC PDF functionality okay and that is actually included here now we don't need to include this because it is already included within the application so we only need to really start here with the pdf and we will come into that later and do note that you can also add then the set creator adjust the author title subject as well as add keywords to your pdf documents we can also then adjust the header, which is something we will be doing. We can also change the fonts as well as the footer, set margins, page breaks, and more. Now do check that out because there is a lot of information here. And of course, you can 
read through that yourself in your own time and of course follow along in today's video. So then let's have a look at the project for this week. So if I just run here the payment grid, within the payment grid, we will have here the employee ID, the client ID. And as I said, I haven't gone ahead and really done anything else here. Now we should have those associated. And for some reason, they're not here. So we could just jump into that grid application and very quickly apply those. Now, if you don't know how to, maybe during the creation, we can just jump in and do that. We'll see how we are on time for today. So then we have here the pay date, pay amount description. And to the right, we have the typical edit that then allows us to adjust the information. And here again, we could change the payways, pay header to switches or alternative methods for the selection of that. And as I said, the payways will come into that as we come to the PDF. And the pay header is part of the PDF. So if, for instance, you have zero entered for the pay header, the header would not be displayed. Okay, so let's continue and check out then the PDF document that we are creating. So we have here, first of all, a custom receipt. And here we have then a custom layout as well as two printouts for that because it's two printouts selected for that um, option here. So if I come here then to the test payment, here we only have one receipt because we only have one indicated. Okay, so we can go ahead and make further adjustments there and add the other logos and so forth. You'll notice I didn't add the other logos for the other companies, just for the first one. And with that, you can go ahead and, of course, add your own data or reuse these tables for your own project. Now, script case is so easy to use, and on top of that, it also allows you to import projects that you have available online. So this project that you are watching right now, you can download it within the description. There'll be a link down there somewhere. And with that project then, or this project, should I say imported, you can then also go ahead and import the individual applications. So if you wanted to copy this project, custom PDF, you could just check these boxes here on the side, click the copy button, and then replicate these applications as well as the tables and everything will then be included within the selected project, which is really an awesome feature, meaning that you can replicate any other application or project that you are able to get your hands on. And there are so many of them right here on the Scriptcase channel. And of course, some more over on my own channel at Scriptcase by Jamie. Okay, so let's dive in on how do we actually make this PDF today. So I am logged in to Scriptcase and I will start off by creating a new project. I will choose to create a blank project and the project I will call, uh, let's call it custom PDF again. I don't have it here yet, custom PDF. And this is how you create a custom PDF layout. So now I hope I spelled that correctly. There we go. Okay, so there we can click here the next button and already our project has essentially been created. Now we need to link our project to our chosen database. So we have loads of databases here to choose from and you can select any of those. Our database, as you may know of choice, is typically MySQL. That doesn't have to be your choice because believe me, there are better options there. But in general, MySQL is pretty much everywhere. So I will choose then the MySQL database. And then here I can configure the database connection. Now I don't have any requirements here. The host name is my local. So it's 127.0.0.1. The port is default. My username is root. So I can just go ahead and click list database. Now typically you will need to adjust the username as well as the password, include those and maybe even adjust here the server host as well as the port. 
Okay, so once you've done that, you can then go ahead and choose the database. So I would choose that SC underscore PDF gen. I will test the connection and then I will go ahead and click next. Now here I can choose the language. I'm just going to go with English today. So I'll go next and today's theme, well, let's go with this sweet corral. I'm always, every so often I'll go with this one. So let's choose the sweet corral today and go create. Okay, so typically when you are creating your project, it is a good idea to choose a theme that is similar to the colors and so forth or design and layouts that you want to have within your project. And with that, you can then also go ahead within the theme and make very easy adjustments. It may take a little time because you're going to check every so often does it look the way you want it to look because sometimes you're not too sure of the setting that is going to happen especially when you are first using Scriptcase. But don't worry it is pretty much all very easy to use and nice and stable. Okay so now if I come here to the new application which is then the default page I am presented with once I have created a project. So here I will choose to create a PDF report, but not right now. No, I'm sorry, we are not going to be starting there today. So today I will close the new application and I will start by creating here the data dictionary. Okay, so this will then allow me to create a dictionary which is associated to this project. And that will basically allow me to set language keys within the dictionary as well as, you know, assign values to the fields. We'll see, we'll see all of that in a few moments. So just hang in there and click that Create Data Dictionary button to continue. Okay, so now we have the option to add our tables here, but we first need to choose them or select them here, check, check those checkboxes, and we only need it for our main tables being the client, company, and payment. The payment view doesn't really need. In special occasions, you may want to add it or include it within your data dictionary. But in this case, I will leave it out. It's really not needed. So then I will choose here the next button, and then click here, overwrite language files indexes. Now, that may seem a bit odd because there are none available right now. It's just a habit of mine to actually do that. So I'm just going to go ahead and click then the add button. And you may receive an error here. Okay, I wouldn't worry too much because if we check that, first of all, it's going to say an undefined array key. But okay, let's continue. Okay, because sometimes it, script case will throw you an error like that and it's something else that is not really related to what you are trying to do. It's something else. It could be, you know, something to do with the buttons or anything. But as long if we continue and everything works, which typically 99.9% .9 of the time is the case. Okay, so if I now choose here the tables, I have various options. Again, I can synchronize the dictionary again or I can synchronize any applications I have created. Now, I have not created any applications yet, so really, it's really useless me checking all of those boxes because we don't need to do that yet, okay? Now, I can choose here to view the database tables that are still available that I have not added yet to the dictionary. And I can check that here and then click next if I wanted to later add this payment view and customize those labels for those generated applications. Now, there is a big or a large benefit, should I say, of creating your data dictionary before you generate your applications. The same applies for applying here your project default values because applying the data dictionary or the default values will then also apply all of those features and capabilities that you have pre-selected to all applications that you generate. Okay, so this will save you a great deal of time as you continue on with your project. Okay, so let's continue on. Let's come back here to our client table. So I want to come here to edit and we can see then here the tables, the lab label that will be applied here. Okay. And the length, 
the decimal, if there are decimals, if it's required, the minimum size, and so forth. Now, I will set here as not required for this code because we don't really need this. Or, in fact, let's just leave that as required. I think it's nice. Maybe you, we can just add an extra code in there. So I'll leave those, okay? Because in this table, we don't really need to make any adjustments. We really want to change here maybe the company and the payment tables because here we actually have more information. So at the bottom here, we have here our logo. So I'll change that here from text to image file. And then we have up here uh, an email address somewhere, don't we? Don't we have an email address here? There we are. So here the email address here, I will choose the email field. And of course I could have other defined fields that may be suitable for fields that I have available within my table and I could select them and configure them here. So I will update that and that will update those tables and that will then apply those to my applications. And we can edit that again and just make sure that they are still there and it's all good. You know, there shouldn't be anything special. And notice on the right hand side here, we do have some further properties. So I can also pre-configure here some of these fields. So, okay, I just jumped out there because I clicked there to close. Okay, so, and I should be clicking here really the back button. And you noticed, of course, I did that twice there. So, okay, so we have here our fields defined and we had here also the customer and client. So we will assign those in a few moments. Let's update that. And then here for our payment, we have here the employer ID and we can change that here to an integer, which is then number as well as then here the pay CLI ID. That would then also be a number. And if I go ahead and click here the edit, and here we can assign then the ID. And we have here then the company table and assign then the company or the employee ID as it's then defined within the company table and then the company name. Okay, so in that case, we can go ahead and go back again and then come here also to the CLR ID. And here I'll click there the pen button again. And in this case, we'll choose the client table. And that is then associated here with the CLR ID. And that will then display then the CLI name. Okay, so just by doing that, then all applications we then generate here forward or here henceforth, as you would say, then they will then be generated with the settings that we apply here. Now, we have here then also the amount. Now, that should really be a decimal. So let's choose here decimal and apply two decimal steps there. Okay, so we have also all the fields here as required. I'm just going to leave them as they are and update that. And then, of course, if we have applications already created, we can choose the checkboxes here to select each of these tables and synchronize our applications. In our case, we haven't created any applications yet, so I'll click then the Save and then the Close button, okay? And that should then have stored our information. Okay, so if I go ahead and close here the data dictionary, I can then come here to application and batch applications and choose to generate all of these applications. Now, in this case, I only need here the client, company and payment form and grids. The payment view, if you want to add that, you can go ahead and add that. It's just there as an extra. Okay, so I will go ahead and then generate the source code and bring them all to edit. And by checking these boxes, that is exactly what it will do. It will generate all of these applications and then open each of them so that I can edit them. And you will see that now in a few moments. Now, I'm not speeding any of this up right now. And I should note that this is probably this, the second copy I have running at the same time on the same machine. Um, and it's super speedy fast. Okay, so we have here our grid payment. And of course, we have a slightly different color than we had before. And I do much prefer here the orange It's a little more exciting, isn't it? Okay, so here we want to adjust then this application. And we are actually in this version of script case. So let me close this one. So we don't get confused there. And within this grid payment application, I will then disable here the search 
the detail, the summary, and the chart. We don't need those. We just want the grid. And if you know me, you know I'm going to set the 100 and percent. Okay, so I'll save that. And of course, hopefully with that, it will look a little nicer when you add it. And here in the settings, I will then also apply the vertical alignment top just to bring that up within the browser window and make it look a little nicer for you. Okay, so now that I've done that, I want to really adjust here the edit button. I want to move it over here as well as add another icon that will take us basically to our PDF later on. So I can go ahead and start adding those now. So I would start by creating a new button and this will be a link button. Now I'm going to cheat here, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say PDF button, okay? And I'm going to next and here the state, I'm going to leave that as it is because it's just a link there is only one state. So I will leave that as it is, okay? So that we would then adjust if we are using or creating, should I say, an Ajax button. So here for the font awesome, I will add an icon in here for a receipt. And there we have a nice font awesome icon for that. And of course we have a nice orange for our theme. So let me just choose an orange there and a green for in fact let's go with yellow for hover okay so now i've created this i have a few options here as well to as you know change the color here for the active or you may not know that's why you're watching the video and of course the option here for a hint which is something we would want typically on such a link so here for instance i could say okay uh check out this invoice Okay, and here or receipt or whatever it's going to be. In this case, it's just a receipt. So let me actually change that to receipt. And here for the confirmation message, as you see, I have lots of options here already for the fields I've been using actually within this environment in the last days. So here I can say, are you sure, for instance, and that will actually present me with a confirmation message asking me if I want to continue, which is a nice little feature. It's probably useless in this scenario, but I'm going to leave it so that you can see it. And of course, check it out. Now, as I said, I was going to cheat. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to send it here to the form client. And I don't care about the ID because I will have to change this later on. And I will choose to open in another window and just go ahead and save that. Now, right now, if I run this, I have here my icon. And as you see, I have now the notification or hover effect asking me or telling me check out this in receipt awesome okay so here i want to then also adjust the edit so let me just drag that over there and run that again and then just like that i've moved the edit icon over there and that then of course takes me to the form which is awesome and there of course we could continue adding further features here now right now the pdf icon there is our question notification message there are you sure and i can go, go okay and it will open our chosen link within a new application now in this case i can exit the application because i've opened it as another tab or another window i can exit and it will exit the entire window which is nice as well okay so right now i will leave that as it is because we now need to start creating our pdf okay so let's come here to our home and as you notice, I'm not touching the other applications because, you know, they're, they're all pretty much good already. So I come here to the client. It's nice. We have the form company. It's all there. And of course, we can go ahead and customize this some more. And in fact, let me drag and drop my logo there. And that way, of course, we can then check that out within the pdf or well yes the pdf that we are going to create so i'll drag that in there and i'll just go ahead and save that so just like that as you see we have a fully functional form with image upload just with a few clicks now where else do you get that okay so if i come back here to the application 
Now what I want to do then is start by creating a new application. And as I had mentioned, we have here TCPDF. Now do check this out because it is the library that is used by here, this PDF report. Okay, now we can also use that within a blank application. In that case, we will need to require it as we have seen here. If I come here to examples again, first example, then we will need to require those files. Now we don't require once because we have other methods for that within script case. And if you don't know how, check out the help documentation because it is all there. Okay, so if I come here to PDF report, I can then start to create the PDF document. And I'll start by giving it a name. So I'll say gen PDF. And with that, we can then go ahead and create our select. Now, typically you would go ahead and choose a table and some fields, and we could do that. But in this case today, I actually have the select statement prepared. So I can drag this box down here on the right here. And if I drag it all the way down, we'll see that we have a lot of fields here. And this is from the payment view folder or payment view table. Sorry about that. It is the table that we have here within our database. If I come here to views, payment view, there we go. Okay, so that includes pretty much all of our data. And that is then on a personal level because we have that via the pay ID. Now, if I remove here the where, so I will actually remove that for now and click create. Okay, so script case is now just generated that PDF document for me in not even a second. And if I run that, we have then our default PDF content. So as you see, I have here free exports or free layouts here. And we really want to really customize this. Now, typically you would go into the application here and come here to layout PDF into interface and well, adjust the alignments and everything else. Or maybe you would come here to the layout PDF and you would go and adjust everything into place where you want it presented within your PDF. And that is one way, or should I say, the easiest way of creating the PDF. But at the same time, is it really the easiest way? Because sometimes the easiest way is also the longest way. And the longest way is not always the easiest way. So today's video, ta-da, we are showing you how to now create a custom PDF. So this layout, forget about it. Let's come here to the interface and I'm gonna go ahead and delete each of our items that we have within this. So if I go ahead and say, run this now, we'll see we are missing some data. Okay, so I'll continue and delete all of these fields. And yes, there are a lot of them, so they're all gone now, just about last one, there we go. So now our body is entirely empty, and if I run the PDF now, well, it's empty. Okay, that's no good, is it? Okay, so first of all, I wanna come back here to the SQL, and I wanna add my where back in there so that when I grab it here from the payment grid, I pass on here the pay ID as we have within our database table. Now here the variable, the global variable, I can call that whatever I want it, okay? So right now, if I save that and return back here to my pay grid and then come here to the link option within here the action bar, I can then choose here the gen PDF now as the application that I want to link my button to. And then click here the next button. And here we have then here the pay ID, which is then a field. And then the value is also pay ID from our table. So this is the value or the parameter as it's defined here that we have defined on this application. Okay, so if I go ahead and change this now to payment ID, for instance, and save that and come back here to the grid, return back to the action bar here, go back to link, 
come here to the gen PDF next now I have payment ID okay and now here the value is then a value that I want to pass from my data that I have available within this grid okay and in here I will choose then the pay ID confirm that and just like that I can run that now and that will now open the PDF for this payment for the selected payment that you have here which is really nice okay so just like that we have that linked I'm going to go ahead then and close all of these applications because well they're pretty much done right and anything else you want to do there you can go ahead and apply that now here for the PDF let's run that again and just remind ourselves we have now set here the global ID and so if I enter one gen PDF is going to give me a blank PDF okay so here within the PDF we have then added here the global variable so we are making sure that where pay ID equals the pay ID and that is then our payment view data now in the interface here we've just removed all of the fields in the code section here yes we want to use the code section today so I have prepared some code here so let me start off by adding here our first two lines so we start off here with our PDF okay so we're creating this and this is here our PDF object presented here by our TCPDF library and that is not as TCPDF as we have here it is PDF as we have here so it's a couple of slight differences okay and that with that you'll see that here so that's how we start that off and here I'm saying a via I'm just creating a value I'm saying via how many times basically one um, of course we can change that and give that any type of name that we want to okay and then after that we're going to say do something okay so then within here we can apply our logic in here and start to do whatever we want so the first thing we want to do is print uh, copies of our receipt okay so depending on how many options are selected depending on how many we will create as we had seen earlier on the two receipts versus the one receipt okay so next up we then can further adjust here our PDF value so let me come here and add here the PDF and that will then be a nice little arrow like so and that is a set fill color okay and if you're not sure about that do check again the TC PDF documentation because it is there so then we have some brackets and it's 255 and I will close that up okay so just like that I am specifying a color for my PDF now what I want to do then is add here another if statement so I'm going to add that then here also and for this if statement we have within our data here so if I come here to my fields we have here the pay header okay so here I want to grab that field pay header and depending on that pay header I want to print the header okay so if that is enabled as one or available then we print the header which is nice okay so just like that we are starting off here and then I'm going to say this I need an arrow there again and that is then print header and some brackets and in here we then add our PDF variable that we have created at the top here for our PDF okay so just like that we should have then our header pretty much prepared now you may notice here I'm actually using a method which we will need to create okay so we will get there we will create that shortly but first of all let's just fill in here our code let me save that for now and we can come down here to our programming add our methods and I'll create a new method and I'll call that print header okay so there we go create 
and just like so. And we will need another method, of course, for the body. So while we're here, let's go ahead and add that also. So just like that, we have the two methods that we are calling up here within our code section. Well, we're calling one of them. So now let's add our body. So let's print then the body. And like that, again, we need to add our this and our our function and print body. And here we want to then add within this, first of all, our PDF variable and also our via. Okay, because that will then assign that in there. And here, if I add then our via plus plus, so then we're basically going to loop that as many times as it's available. Now, after this, if it's not available, we want to actually add a while. So if I add a while in here, let's do that. And we want to then here, let's add our via variable. And that will then equal, or less than equal, our pay ways. Okay, so pay ways. Okay, so if I go ahead and save that then, we can run that just to make sure there's no errors there. And if I add here the payment ID one, we can see here we have an unexpected token. So let me just double check here our code. And there here, the while. Let me change that. So while, and then yes, as I thought, I was missing some brackets there. And okay, so let's save that. And what we need to do now is actually add here a global variable. And I'm going to call this sheet underscore part. And that will equal here now some brackets. And what we want to do then is actually create a ternary operator here. So um, let me go then that. Yeah, that will then go question mark. And then here we want to add then our values like so. Okay, so here for our sheet part, this will then basically equal here our global variable again, so sheet underscore part. And that will equal, so we get equals and superior. Superior, like so. And that, of course, we are checking versus inferior and again superior. Okay, so just like that, we have a ternary operator here and we're switching. It's like a little if function, if this or if that. And because it's with two values, we can simplify that like so. So if sheet value equals superior, it's going to fire. And then inferior is basically our alternative option. Okay, so let's go ahead and save that. Now we do have some extras here to add for our print body as well as then here our print header. So I'll start off with the header and the first thing we really want to do here is add here the function. So I need to define a parameter here which I'm passing from the code section. So here I will go add a new parameter and I will call that here PDF. And here the type will change from for value to for references. And if I save that, I can then reference that value here. Now, saving that again, the, the method is then saved and we can start to code it out. Okay, to simplify that, of course, I'm just going to copy and paste our code here and explain it to you. So in our header, we have created here a function or a little variable that is, becomes a function, okay? So here, that equals here our sheet part, which we had added previous within our code section. And that equals superior, right? And then here we have some values defined for passing along. We have then also here our logo. So here for our PDF variable, so that remember we can adjust our PDF using this variable. Here I want to apply an image. So here I'm using then the logo 
field that I have available or defined within my application, and then I'm specifying the location of it. Okay, so below that have then our end section. And end, as you see, it can basically be any type of text. And I've formulated that here so that it is equals some of the fields that we have, i.e. the employee name, the number, and this will basically become the header of our receipt. Now below that, I can then make adjustments to our PDF content. And here I'm saying then the PDF should have a font of Helvetica. We should set the color to 130. And then our multi-cell content, which is here our end variable, so here our content, is then reapplied. Okay, so the multi-cell is basically uh, a repeat. So if we have defined here within our application that we should have our loop going here. So I come back here to payment, run that. And then here in the form, we can see we have here our payways and our pay header. So payways would then basically allow us to manage that. Okay, so if there are multiple receipts in that case, then those multiple receipts would be generated here with the multi-cell. Okay, so then we have here also our header, and I'll save that along the way. And within our body then, we have our, then our body method, and of course we have a load more code in here to add because it is of course our body. So the first thing we do, we define that sheet part is superior. And we still need to make one adjustment there because, of course, we've created some global variables and we need to define whether they are incoming, outgoing, or what's happening with those. And this sheet part is an internal variable, okay? So it's for use within these applications. So we have here, first of all, our Y set to zero, and then we define a line style and then here within our PDF, we apply then our line style. And again, do check out the TCPDF documentation. And else, we just say 148, okay? So just to keep it simple. We have then our line style again here again applied. So for the line style, we create ourselves an array and are a setting then the width, the cap style, as well as the lines at the corners, um, which we have then available within this receipt, which you're going to see in a few moments. Okay, so with those applied, we can then start to print the receipt or the word receipt. And of course, with that singular word, we would typically want to make various adjustments. So we have here again, the multi-cell, because if we have multiple receipts, then we will need to print that multiple times. So we have then the set font and text color. So we define the font and color for the word receipt. And of course, you can see that it is slightly different. Typically, the word receipt would want to be a little larger. Now, if we continue on, then we have here a number receipt variable, which we have created. And here we are creating here the number text and defining the date, formatting the date as we are wanting it, including also here the pay ID and then also the via code that is then provided from our table here. Okay, so with that formulated or created there, we can then again format here our content. So we set the font, we set the text color, and then again, we add the multi-cell for our value here, and during which we are always setting here the width, height, border, X, Y positions, okay? So that's what we're seeing there all the time, and it's nicely commented here also. So below that, we print the highlighted value on the right, we print then the long text of the receipt, and again, all formulated here and formatted in certain ways. We print the city and date, and then we print a signature on this receipt. So let's not forget to, one, save this method, and also make sure that we have here the parameter added. So here again, I will 
add PDF as the name and for references as the type. And if I save that again and save here at the top just to be sure, you know, double everything is always sometimes good. And in that case, we can continue. So let's just double check here. We have, first of all, in SQL, our payment ID. And that is what we will then need to provide. We have here our code provided for our content, as well as then here, we are linking here, remember, the PDF variable that we are referencing everywhere and that we have included both here in the print header and print body. Okay, so again, I'm going to save again. It's just a force of habit. And if I go ahead and run, we will see that we have here our global variables, which we have not yet set. So let's not check out the receipt yet. Let's actually deal with that. So if I come here to application, come here to global variable, remember I was saying the sheet part that is used internally for this PDF document. So here I'll just choose out and then the payment ID remains as in. So if I save that and run it again, now when I generate the PDF, it's only requesting here the payment ID. I can add then the ID and then generate the PDF receipt. And just like that, as you see, we have then our receipt here. Now, you can make further adjustments, of course, within the code to the positionings as well as to the text and everything else that you have here. I'm seeing my logo is not exactly there yet, so I would have to more than likely upload and save that again. Um, let's go ahead and actually make sure that was added so that we see the logo. Okay, so if I come here to the form payment, in fact, it wasn't form payment, it was form company. And while we are at it, I will open up the grid company and, well, let's leave there the search, remove the detail, summary, I will leave the chart. I will leave the summary and the chart and click save. Now I'm leaving these because I think it's actually good to have those within this type of application. And again, you know, because I'm here, I'm just going to go ahead and apply those settings. Now I did forget on the grid module to set that 100%. Okay, so now if I go ahead and run again, we have here our grid and let's check here our fields. So we have here our logo. If I display that, save that again. So just like that, I can drag and drop that field up here. And then here in the fields on the left hand side, I can then modify that image. Now here for the image, we do need to also make sure we have our fields defined here within our PDF which is something we haven't done. So it's not only here within the grid and the form, okay? So here for the grid application, I'm actually going to set a height as well as a width, and that will then basically make sure that the logo is always that size. Now, maybe a bit high and maybe wide, you know, for now, let's just have it like so. And of course, within the form, we would then need to define that here also and for the logo. And if I define here the image height and width, then that is how they will also be displayed within this application. So here I can say 230, 300 again, or 3000 and save that. Now for the form, I would typically want to add a clickable upload area and more than likely, you know, store this in a folder, create a subfolder, maybe even use the API for storage, however you like. So in this case, the image is just going to be stored directly here within the test environment, which is not really great. So there I have the logo, and we can see that the logo is actually working beautifully, and there's no issues with that. So it's just the other two logos that I didn't add. So if I come back here to my gen PDF, and come here to emp logo. We need to change this field here to an image file name. And well, I will leave the height and the width. And you can go ahead and adjust that yourself. We also have then here other values which we would then also want to adjust. For instance, here the pay amount. This is not an integer. It is in fact here um, a decimal. 
And here we can add then the decimal precision as well as completion with zeros and so forth. So that, I will save that and we can further adjust other fields here for email address and whatever else is then required. So now if I go ahead and run the application again, choose then the, the ID, we now have also the image displayed within this PDF receipt. So I hope you have enjoyed this week's video. Thank you very much for watching. And of course, if you have any questions, doubts, or need something developing, just hit me up at help at scriptcasebyjamie.com. Or of course, visit the website, check out my channel as well. And there, of course, I'm also helping and trying to share more information on Scriptcase. So thank you very much for watching. Don't forget, support is always there for you also. And, you know, Scriptcase is amazing. And that's why I also do these videos, okay? That's why I create these videos for Scriptcase. Not because they pay me, okay? So thank you very much for watching. And until the next video.